We're starting our last ring of the Sunshine Daydream Quilt. Hey, this is Carrie with Canary Quilts, and this week we are working on steps 10 and 11 of the Tula Pink Sunshine Daydream Quilt. And we are taking our templates, number two, three, and four, and five, I was thinking this was different, but it's just a fussy cut one. Two, three, four, five, and we're putting them together to make these sections, which we're gonna put together next week to make another ring. And once we have that ring done, we're putting the whole quilt together. We only have two more weeks. I am so excited. It was so much fun working on this because there's so many colors in this. You get to work with like every single fabric that's in it. So, and you get to get this beautiful butterfly up there at the top. So today I'm going to walk you through how I did this, how I organized myself to put these together. It doesn't tell you how to iron the seam, so I show you how to do that. I tell you how I kind of distribute my butterflies so that I don't have the same butterfly, I shouldn't have the same butterfly next to each other in the circle of the quilt. So I'm going to show you how I do that today. Other than that, it's really pretty simple to put together. Um, if you're new here, and you like what you see, I've got the quilt fabric kit which comes with the pattern linked down below and I have all the previous videos listed so that you can watch and uh, figure out how to do this and sew along with us. Yeah, the like I said, the fabric kit comes with the pattern so it just doesn't come with the backing. That's the only thing. And if you saw my last unpacking video, unboxing video, you saw the backing that's going on this. But anyway... <laughs> Hit the subscribe button, notification bell, you get notified and you'll get to see when the next video and you get to see when we put this together and you get to see how the quilt turns out because I'm just so excited to put this together. I just, I just love these colors. But anyway, let's get started. All right, this week we are working on steps 10 and 11 and what 10 and 11 is, we are going to create these units right here and you make two of each. So you're gonna work from gray to the butterfly. <clears throat> so you're gonna need template two, three, four, and five. And what we need to do with all of our fabrics in each template is mark them. So what I did was I took a pin and I poked a hole in each of these corners right here or these points on three and four. It's in all the points and you, you need to note the outer point but really only on template three. So I'll show that in a minute. Template two is all your gray, black, whatever you wanna call it. Do the same thing, all three points. Poke a hole in so we can make marks. And then five is our fussy cut butterflies and you only need to do it down here in this point. So, I used a friction pen, because that's what I have, and uh, you just need to be mindful that these erase with heat if you're using them, because we will be ironing, and you don't want to iron over the whole thing and erase your other points. So, just whatever you need to do to remember that, or use a different type of marking. I have this, but it's white, so it doesn't go on a lot of these very well. Um, had to find that out the hard way. But anyway... Go through, line your template up, take your marking pen, go in each of your holes, make your mark, and then what I did on template three was I took my pen and I just made a line up here in the seam allowance just because when you're looking at it, it's hard to tell which is the um, outer point. It does only go on one way, but if you want to make it easier, you can mark in the seam allowance your outer point, however you want to do that. So I've got my threes marked. You can see my points here, and I marked my outer point. So I'm going to take this one away. Do that on all of your three fabrics. Template four, same exact thing. Go through, lay your template down. Mark through the holes you made like that. 
and you don't really need to mark this outer point but you could the same way with an outer point so do that with all template four fabrics mark your points template two same thing i had to switch i needed the white take your template two mark all of your points like that and you end up with these marks here so that's how you mark template two and template five is easier take all of your template fives mark them down here with whatever you need a couple of these i needed to use this because i had butterfly down in there and it was dark so that's how you do all your markings and you have to do that first or I suggest you do it first. Don't do it every time you pull one out. But if you want to, you can. Now I can set my templates aside. I'm all ready to go. And so the next thing we need to do is we need to pair our fabrics up. So what you do is you'll have your template three fabrics in a pile. You'll have your template four in a pile. These will be later. And you need to go through and look at what you need here so this is p and k i believe so let's see template three you want to look it up and p is no this is k k and h sorry for some reason i pulled one out of the middle instead of the top or bottom but anyway template three if i were here is k so then I need to go find template four, H. And H is the parrots. So template three, right here. Template four, right here. One's the squatty fat one and the other one is the diamond. And so these are gonna be paired together. And somewhere I have these. So what I did was I pinned them. These two are going to make a unit just like this right here. So these were paired together in our table. So what I did was I went through and, I'm on page, I went through and clipped all of these together as I paired them. Started with three, added four, pinned them together. So I got this nice pile here where I've got three and four pin, and then I'm going to add my butterfly to it. Now, with the butterflies, I'm sure you've got several of all these butterflies that you could cut out. I had different amounts of each butterfly. So I separated all my butterflies by the same pattern. So I had a pile of this type, and I had a pile of this type, and this type. And this type, I think I had six different piles. And this took a little more time because I want, I want my butterflies to be different when they sit next to each other on here. So what I had to do was, like this one is this right here. I picked two different butterflies. So each of these that you make is going to have a different butterfly at the top. It, this is how I'm doing it. So I have a choice when I do these. So I'm going to have one of these on this side of the quilt and one on this side of the quilt. So I have choices, which will help. And then I looked at the next one, which I don't know, it's this one right here. And I was like, well, I don't want two of these butterflies that I chose in the other one, so I picked two different butterflies to put with this set because they're going to sit next to each other. And then I looked at the other one, which is right here, and was like, okay, I want two different butterflies if I can right here. So basically, that's kind of how I did it, but you're gonna, I just made sure I had two different butterflies with each set I made. So that I do have choices as I'm putting this together, so hopefully I don't end up with two butterflies next to each other that are the same. 
And that's how I came up with my sets. So, I basically have them clipped together. I have three, four, three, four, five. Because that's kind of, that's how we're going to put it together. And then we've got our two here. So now that we have our sets together, we feel comfortable with our butterflies, we can start putting these together. And I worked in sets. So I'm going to pull this first set off. Let's unclip it. Let's take a two and a three. So what you want is to take your gray piece and take your template three and put it to the right and make sure your outer piece is to the top here. So the point of this one and this one are going to line up here. That's the way you don't want to do this. You want to do this. So it's going to go to the right with the outer point to the top. So now all we're going to do is line our points up here and then sew down the seam. And you can do that either by eye or what some people like to do is take a pin. Let's put these together. You can take a pin. I can see that point. Put it right through that point. Put it through this one and line it up like that. Make sure your pin is straight. And then I use clips, so I'm going to clip it. <clears throat> And this one, what I found in the other one, does pretty much line up, so. Clip it. My case, clip it. Put my pin away. And... I'm going to grab another clip. So I am ready to put these together. And you can do two at a time since we're working on both of these. I'm going to put this over there, ready to go. Outer points up here. And match those. And you can eyeball them. But you don't have to. Feel more comfortable pinning them, that's good too. <laughs> and we'll get these sewn. Okay, before we get started sewing, because we're going to have to come back and press, I want to make a note about pressing. Um, I tried pressing different ways, and because it doesn't tell you in the pattern how to press it, so I pressed towards piece I just put on on all of these and it's a good idea to do that because these pieces are going to go on like this together so these seams are coming together right here but when we flip them over we're going to have to cross them And it just makes it, cross them by a quarter of an inch, and it just makes it a little flatter here. For what it's worth, it makes it a little flatter. So that's how I came up with my, how I'm going to press. I'm just going to always press towards the piece I put on. So I just wanted to make note of that before we come back and uh, have to start pressing. So. Okay, there's the two pieces I just sewed on, template three onto template two, and now I'm going to iron towards template three. So I'm ironing towards the piece I just sewed on or the larger number piece, so I'm going to iron template three away from, oops, damn it, I did it, I did it, I did what I told you not to do. Got to remark my piece. But anyway, get these iron towards. <laughs> yeah. Darn it. Anyway, iron towards number three. Don't forget you got marks here. Ugh. Let me get it remarked. We'll come back. Okay, I got it remarked. So, we are now going to add three, four, on to three. 
and we're going to do it just like this with this like fat part on the bottom next to our diamond right here and you can see the points line up we're just going to flip them you can use the pin method or the eyeball method to line up my points And we will get these sewn on. Okay, I think I forgot to mention, you're just always going to add to the right upper section here. So we're just going to be building this curve out like this. So we can get these sewn. And again, we're going to iron towards the larger number template or towards the piece we just added on, however you want to remember it. Again, we're going to iron towards the piece we just put on. Do not iron your marks off like I did. I'm making the mistakes for you. And now we will add our butterfly on. So our butterfly is going to go up here on the right hand side, like that. We will match these points. I'm not sure why they have you mark that one, but that's fine. The reason they have you mark points is because there is going to be tails, and you don't want to have to figure those tails out. So you figure the points out. And I just flatten it out and pin it up to the top. Boy, is this going to be a pretty quilt. Woo. on come back we'll have two more sections done okay we got our butterfly section or template five on and we're going to iron towards that template and since we don't need the marks on this i can iron over top of it so there we go there is a section you will end up with 12, I don't know if I should call these sections. This is a section, you're going to have 24 total sections, but 12 color sections. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to pile them up as I do them, and they will be in the same color scheme in each one. And uh, then at the end, I will be able to pair those up to do next week's so i'll show you that when i get there but anyway that's how you put like a section together and then you just start grabbing off of these and you can start putting them together just remember to put your points together your marks here or iron towards the piece you just put on or the higher number template however you want to remember it so i'm going to get the rest of these done and we can come back and take a look at them and i'll show you how i'm going to organize for next week there we go finished up all my units here and i've got them pinned together and what i did once i finished them up is i went and put a little mark on here of what unit they are like this is the ji unit which is actually the first one and i have them in order here so this is the j fabric this is the i fabric so that's the one on top Here's the B and the J unit. My E and B. And I didn't have any issues with this. It went together just like I showed you at the beginning. So I'm just like repeating this over 12 times. G, E, F, 
F G H F K H The reason I did this is because next week we need to pair these up and they're going to tell you to pair up a PK with another one. So that's why I did it like this is so I'm ready for next week. So there's PK D P L D C and L and I and C. So there we go. We are ready for next week. So went through, like I said, marked them, put them in this order, and then next week we'll be putting them together by these units. And so we have, we're going to have a bottom unit and a top unit. So we'll get to that next week. But yeah, it's uh, it took a little bit of time, but it's pretty simple. It's just everything, you know, it's getting everything order, organized, get ready. I feel like it took longer to mark all of these than it almost did to sell them. So hit the subscribe button, notification bell. You get notified when we do next week and we start pairing these up. And then um, I actually have it set up so that we put the pairs together and then we assemble the quilt. I might read, I might not do that. I may put the pairs together and make the ring and then we'll assemble the quilt the following week. So it took some time, but it didn't take as long as I thought it would. So yeah. Anyway, I had fun doing these sections. I love the colors. Um, I love the butterflies. So I'm really excited to put this together and we are so close now. But anyway, I had fun making this video and uh, check out the links down below. It really does help the channel out. I really appreciate it and I will see you next week. Bye.